All right, so uh, this is the homework uh, for Chapter 7, Lesson 1. I'm just going to do a handful of problems to make sure you guys get the idea. So uh, for the first one, um, we have to find horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, kind of briefly review um, what we talked about. So if you recall from the lesson, your form of the equation is a over x minus h plus k. All right, and in order to find the vertical asymptote, you're going to set the denominator to zero. In this case, that's x minus h. And to find the horizontal asymptote, you're going to uh, set y equal to your k value. All right. So that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So for the first one, For our vertical asymptote, set the denominator to zero. And then we solve, so we got plus three on both sides. So we get x equals three. And that's our vertical asymptote, so I'm gonna label that on here. All right, to find our horizontal asymptote, we are gonna set y equal to our k value. Here, that's my k value. So my y is equal to four. All right, so that's it for that problem. All right, let's do another example. So let's look at example number three here. So we got y equals negative four over x minus six minus five. Okay, so for this example, we're gonna set the denominator to zero for vertical. Move the six over. And so x equals 6, that's our vertical. For our horizontal, set y equal to our k value, which in this case is negative 5. All right, so that is our horizontal. All right, so then the next thing uh, that we want to do is look at number 5. So in this case, for number five, we have y equals three over x minus three plus one. We want to find the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, we want to set y equal to zero. So that means that this y is going to be zero. So zero equals three over x minus three plus one. Okay, so now we, gonna, we wanna move the one over. We gotta get rid of the one first. So we're gonna subtract it over. All right, in order to, so to solve this, we have to get rid of this denominator and we have to move it over to the other side. So right now this is dividing because this is a division bar. So we gotta get rid of this by multiplying. So we're gonna times by this entire denominator and that will cancel whatever we do on one side we're going to make sure we want to do it on the other side so notice i put a parenthesis here because we need to distribute use distributive property okay so i have negative x and then i have plus three and then i have a three left over because these canceled and then we're going to go ahead and solve this so move the three over by subtracting it All right, so negative x equals zero. There's an invisible negative one here, and it's multiplying, so we gotta divide it off. So we get x equals zero. All right, so that's our x-intercept. Usually if the x-intercept is zero, that means y-intercept is also zero, uh, but we are gonna verify that. Okay, so we got x equals zero. Now let's do y-intercept. So y-intercept is when x is zero. So you're going to replace x with 0 everywhere you see in the original. So we got y equals 3 over 0 minus 3 plus 1. So 3 divided by, so 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So we got 3 divided by negative 3 plus 1. 3 divided by negative 3, that's negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is going to be 0. 
All right, so our y-intercept is zero, which is exactly what we were saying, that they should be the same. So there you go, y equals zero. Vertical asymptote, remember, we had to set the denominator to zero for that one. So let's go ahead and do that. So our denominator is x minus three. So let's set that to zero. That means x equals three, if you add the three to both sides. All right. So vertical asymptote, x equals three. Horizontal asymptote, remember, is going to be our k value. So in this case, my k value is one, all right? So if you look at here, this is my k value. So that means vert, uh, horizontal y equals one. You can go straight to that answer, as long as you can identify the k. The domain, once we have a vertical asymptote, remember the definition of asymptote, you can't cross that asymptote. Um, generally, you can't cross it, so that means that x cannot be equal to three. Okay, and for same thing for horizontal, range is the y values, and you usually can't cross that, so we're gonna say y does not equal to one. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and graph this guy. I'm gonna do it on a larger graph paper so that you can see the graph. <clears throat> okay, so now we got our numbers here. We're gonna plot them. So we got zero, zero for our um, x-intercept and our y-intercept. So that's gonna be down here in the origin. We got a vertical asymptote of three. All right, so I'm gonna do that. We have a vertical asymptote of three. And we have a horizontal at one. Okay, so there you go. We got our asymptotes. We got our intercept. So now you can tell from this graph that it wants to approach here and it wants to approach here, right? So we're gonna go ahead and draw that shape the best we can here. All right, so there's that shape. Now we need a point to the right. So if I were to do my little table here, right? I got an X, Y table. We already have one of our points. One of our points was zero, zero. All right, now we need to find another point to the right of this line. So right now this line is at three. I need to choose like four, five, six, something like that. So I'm gonna choose four in order to get one value to the right. So I'm gonna choose four. Remember, the more points, the better, but at least get that one point so that you know how it behaves. So now we're gonna plug in the four into our original, okay? So remember our original was three over x minus three plus one. That was what our y equals. So we're gonna plug in the four in there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So we, we would get three over four minus three plus one. So that'll be negative one, on, or one on the bottom, sorry. Three divided by one plus one. So three divided by one plus one is going to be four. So we got four comma four. That's our ordered pair. So we got four and four. Now we can go ahead. Now we know that it's above this line, so we know it behaves like this. If it was below this line, then we, it would behave like that. All right, so now we can go ahead and graph that. and there's our graph, all right? That's how it looks like. So it looks like a hourglass shape, hyperbola. All right, so now let's look at the next one. We're gonna look at uh, one more of these problems so you can kind of see how it's done. So here, for number seven, we're doing the same, we were doing the same thing that we did earlier, so we got one over x minus seven plus three. So we're gonna find the x-intercept. Remember to find the x-intercept, you set um, y equal to zero, 
uh, which basically means that you're going to set the numerator to zero. So a little tip here, right, is you're going to set, uh, well, and generally you would set the denominator zero, or the numerator to zero, but uh, here uh, you need to, oh, okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself here. So just set y to zero and then solve. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and set y to zero. So we get 0 equals 1 over x minus 7 plus 3. All right, so then we'll solve. Move the 3 over. Okay, move the x minus 7 over. Right now it's dividing because it's under a division bar. So we multiply. Make sure you put it in parentheses and you're multiplying, so that means you are distributing to both numbers. So this will be negative 3x and then positive 21. And you get equal to 1, and then we can solve, so subtract 21 on both sides. And then divide by negative 3. It looks like we get 20 thirds. Two negatives makes a positive, so this is a fraction. Now 20 thirds, three goes into 20 about six times, right? Um, and then you got a remainder of two, so this is really six and two thirds. And two thirds is about 0.6, so this is approximately 6.7. All right, this will give you an idea of where to graph that. Okay, so if you have problems with this, make sure you review the, the fractions in order to um, um, make this easier for yourself in the future. All right, so that's our x-intercept, so 20 thirds. All right, our y-intercept here, we need to set x to 0. So x is going to be 0. So y equals 1 over 0 minus 7 plus 3. So we have 1 divided by negative 7 plus 3. This is just a fraction here. So we got 3 minus 1 over 7. All right? If you have problems with the fractions, you need to review this stuff, okay? So you have to know the basics of fractions here. So we got negative 1 over 7. This is the same thing as 3 over 1. All right, so now, if this is 3 over 1, in order to combine fractions, we need to have the same denominator. So we need to make this 1 into a 7. So we need to multiply this by 7. All right, so if I multiply this by 7, that'll give me 7 on the bottom. However, if I do this on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. So I'm going to multiply by 7 on top. So now I have negative 1 over 7 plus 21, 3 times 7, over 7. Now I can combine the numerators. Remember that you don't add the denominators for fractions when you're adding or subtracting. So you're going to have 21 plus negative 1 is 20, and then you have over 7. Okay, so your y-intercept is 20 over 7. Again, if you want a better idea of what that is, uh, 7 goes into 20 about 2 times. 7 times 2 is 14, so you're going to have a remainder of 6 over 7. So this is almost 3. All right, so 27th is our y-intercept. All right, now let's look at the vertical asymptote. Remember it said denominator to zero. Our denominator here is x minus seven. So we are gonna set that to zero. Which means if you add seven over to both sides, you get x equal to seven. All right, so that is our vertical. Uh, horizontal, you're going to use your k value. Your k value is given by the 3. So this is your k. So y equals 3. Your domain, once you have your vertical and your horizontal, you know what they are. So if vertical is x equals 7, domain x cannot equal to 7. y equals 3 is your horizontal. So y cannot be 3 for the range. Okay, now let's go ahead and graph this guy. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so now let's look at our characteristics for number seven, and then we'll do it on the graph. So, uh, 20 thirds we said was almost seven. So we're going to plot that, okay? So it's almost seven. So that's our x-intercept. Our y-intercept is 20 over 7. So we said that that was uh, almost uh, 3, because 3 times 7 is 21. So it's almost 3. So that's our y. So let's do it up here. It's almost 3. Okay. Now let's do our vertical, x equals 7. All right, uh, y equals 3 is our horizontal, I believe. Yes, y equals 3. All right, so we got our asymptotes. We got our we got a couple points here. So now that we know these points, we, we can kind of see that it's approaching here and approaching here. So we're going to go ahead and draw that graph now. We already got those points. Okay, so it's approaching like that. And then we need a point to the right of this. We need an X valley to the right of this vertical line. Right now it's at seven, so let's pick eight. So let's do our little table like we usually do. All right, so we got X, Y table. Let's write, list our, all our values. So we know we have zero and uh, 27th for one of our values. We found that earlier. And then our other point here was, um, 20 thirds for x, right? 20 thirds for x. And the y value is 0 there. Um, now let's do one more point for this guy. So let's pick x equals 8. So let's do x equals 8. And then we're going to plug it into our function. Our function was 1 over x minus 7 plus 3. So you're going to plug that in there. Um, so we got 1 over uh, 8 minus 7 plus 3. So we're just plugging in there. Um, so we got 1 over 1 plus 3, which is going to be 1 over 1 plus 3, which is going to be 4. So we got 8 comma 4, so we can plot that now. So you got 8 and 4, so you're over here. Now you can go ahead and draw it because it looks like it's going to approach here. And it's going to approach here. All right. And that's how you do it. So um, it's not too bad. You just got to make sure you get those points and then a and you're able to um, draw um, each branch of the hyperbola. All right. And good luck for the rest of the examples, guys.